Hello, in this problem we're going to do a proof. We're told that G is abelian and we have to prove that this map from G into G given by F of A equals A to the negative one is an isomorphism. So this is an exercise from some random book I have. Uh, the book is called Foundations of Higher mathematics. And I, I, this is a problem that's, you know, found in several books, but this book is pretty good because it teaches you how to write proofs and it actually has some group theory in it. This is the one by uh, Fletcher and Patty. And I believe the book was like from late 80s, early 90s. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this problem. So I think I'm just going to do it. Proof. So we're told that G is an abelian group. That's our assumption. So suppose that G is abelian. I have not done this problem yet, by the way. So I'm just going to try to do it here. And we have to prove that it's an isomorphism. So we have to show three things, basically. We have to show that it's a homomorphism. We'll do that first. Homomorphism. We have to show that it's one-to-one. -one. And we have to show that it's on to. One to one also means uh, injective. So if you're taking discrete math or you know a little bit of discrete math, that's typically the word they use there. And on to means surjective. So all kinds of big fancy words in this problem. It's really not a hard problem, it's just about applying definitions. So suppose that G is abelian, and now we have to show all of these things. Let's start with the homomorphism part. So claim F is a homomorphism, homomorphism. So to show it's a homomorphism, we basically have to show that for all A, B, and G, we have F of A, B equal to F of A times F of B. That's what we have to show. So let's try it. So then for all A, B, and G, we have f of ab. Well, what is that equal to? That's equal to ab inverse, right? Just just applying um, the function here, just replacing a with ab. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil a little bit here. Good stuff. And there's a formula for this. This is actually equal to b inverse a inverse. That's via a formula. So I'm just going to put a little arrow here and say formula. That's one of those formulas that you should just know if you know group theory. Um, totally worth knowing. Very easy to prove, a little bit tedious. You just have to use associativity a bunch of times. And, uh, oh, G is abelian. So these commute. That's what it means to be abelian. So this is A inverse B inverse. Oh, but wait, that's F of A. And that's F of B. Boom, we're done. Hence, hence uh, F is a homomorphism. F is a homo morphism. Cool, that worked out really nice. All right, now we have to show it's injective. So what does that mean? So injective basically means that for all A and B, whenever you have F of A equal to F of B, then A is equal to B. So that's what we have to show. So claim F is one to one or injective, same thing. So take any, take any, you can still see it's a new camera setup for me. Take any uh, AB. Well, let me not, let me just say, yeah, G with F of A equals F of B. So suppose F of A is equal to F of B uh, for A and B and G. So whenever this is true for A, B, and G, we have to show that A is equal to B. So what's F of A? So then. We have that A inverse is equal to B inverse, right? So now you have to show A is equal to B. So basically you just do a bunch of multiplication, right? So like let's, let's start by multiplying on the left by A. So if I multiply on the left by A, I get A, A inverse equals A, B inverse. So what is that? Well, A inverse, that's E. So now we have A, E equals B, A, B inverse. Now multiply on the right by B, then we have EB equals AB inverse times B. 
E is the identity, so this is B. Here we can use associativity, so this is going to be A, B, inverse B. B inverse is the inverse of B, so this is B equals AE, so B equals A. I did that pretty quick, and I said a lot of words, but yeah, that's it. So we started with F of A equal to F of B. We have B equals A, or A equals B, same thing. So F is 1 to 1. Let's show uh, F is onto. Claim F is onto. I did that pretty quick, but the idea is you just basically use uh, just you know properties of a group. You multiply uh, on the left by A. These go away. You just get the identity. The identity times an element is the element. Uh, and then you multiply on the right by B. You use the associativity, and then it's the inverse, so you get E. A times E is A because E is the identity, etc. So, you know, you would write all that down if you were doing this like for like a class or something. But So claim F is onto. All right, so onto, let me just remind you what that means. So um, I'll use a different map to emphasize the point. If you have F from, let's say, A to B, this is going to be onto if for all little b and capital B, there exists some little a and capital A such that f takes little a and sends it to little b. Did that pretty quickly, but that's what it means to be onto. You want you want to know this cold uh, when you start doing you know proof like this. If you pick up this book, there's a whole section on onto an injective, and this is something that you want to know. Like it's like breathing, right? So for all little b in the codomain, that's called the codomain. There's an element a in the domain such that f takes that little element a and sends it to b. So we start, um, let's, just, let's just try to work it out here on the side and then try to fill in our proof over here. So like, let's say we had a little b, so we would want, so we need f of a to be equal to little b. That's what we want, right? So we need a inverse to be equal to little b. So what, what's going to make this true? What choice of little a can we make so that this equation is true? Well, b inverse, right? If we, if we set a equal to b inverse, right, uh, then then b inverse inverse is going to be b. So now let's just formalize it in our proof. So I'm going to do all of this again more carefully here. So I'll say take any b in, and then what's the codomain of our function? Our function is a map from g to g, so it's g in both cases. So take our big b is g, okay, that, that's our big b. Then since G is a group, uh, the element the element, I'll call it A, A equals B inverse is in G and F of A equals F of B inverse which is equal to B inverse inverse is equal to B. Just so you can see how it matches the definition. That's why I called it A here. Just so you can see how it perfectly matches the definition of on two. So we started with a B in the codomain and we found an element A in the domain such that F of A is equal to B. That's precisely what it means to be onto, right? You start with an element B in the codomain, you find an element A in the domain such that F of A is equal to B. So this shows F is onto. Because f is uh, one to one and onto, it's a bijection. So thus is a bijection because it's one to one and onto. And then therefore it's uh, an isomorphism. So it's a homomorph. It's a bijective homomorphism. So it's an isomorphism. Or as I said here, it's one to one onto and a homomorphism. Same thing. That's what it means to be an isomorphism. So therefore. F is an isomorphism. So whenever you have an iso isomorphism between groups, you say that the groups are isomorphic. So in this case, it was the same group. It was G and G. But like if you had, like let's say you had a different group, like say you had F from G to H, and then this was an isomorphism, like you show that this is an isomorphism, then you would say G is isomorphic to H. And they're basically the same group. So... Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, hopefully this has been helpful to someone out there <laughs> in the world. Um, yeah, good luck and, and take care.